As a respiratory therapist, of course you must know how to treat and care for adult patients. That's a given, right? With that said, it's often overlooked just how important it is to know how to care for neonatal and pediatric patients as well. Not to mention, you must know how for the TMC exam as well if you want to earn a passing score. So to help, in this video, we're going to break down a few sample TMC practice questions on this very topic. So if you're ready, let's get into it. A four-year-old patient has been admitted to the emergency department with signs of wheezing and stridor. An AP x-ray shows an area of prominent subglottic edema, but the lateral neck x-ray appears normal. Which of the following is the most likely problem? A. Cystic fibrosis B. Foreign body C. Epiglottitis or D. Croup Do you know the answer? Let's break it down. For the TMC exam, you absolutely must be able to recognize the difference between croup and epiglottitis. Croup, aka laryngotracheal bronchitis, is characterized as subglottic edema, which means that the swelling occurs below the glottis. It is often associated with inspiratory stridor. When croup is present, the onset occurs more slowly, usually over 24 to 48 hours. One thing to look for when croup is present is the steeple sign on a lateral neck x-ray. Epiglottitis, on the other hand, is characterized as inflammation of the epiglottis and supraglottic structures, which means that the swelling occurs above the glottis. With epiglottitis, the onset occurs rapidly, and this condition can be considered to be a medical emergency that usually requires immediate intubation and mechanical ventilation. When epiglottitis is present, you should look for the thumb sign on the lateral neck x-ray. But this question tells us that the child has subglottic edema, which is an immediate giveaway that the correct answer has to be D. Croup. Before we move along to the next question, I just wanted to let you know about our TMC test bank. It's a massive bank of premium practice questions that many students have been using to prepare for and pass the TMC exam. Going through practice questions is by far one of the most effective preparation strategies and that is why so many of our recent students have been successful. Our practice questions cover every topic that you're required to know for the exam, including topics that unfortunately many students forget to study. If you're interested, we're actually running a temporary promotion that you can take advantage of. Pause this video and check it out. I'll drop a link to it right below this video down in the description. A two-year-old patient is showing signs of a severe asthma attack. The physician orders a bronchodilator that is available in both MDI and SVN doses. Which of the following would be the best delivery system for this patient? A. An SVN using the blow-by technique. B. An MDI with a holding chamber and mask. C. A small volume nebulizer with a mouthpiece. Or D. A breath-actuated MDI with a mask. Do you know the answer? Well, let's break it down. In general, most infants and small children should receive aerosolized drugs with an MDI with a valved holding chamber and a mask. This is usually a more effective delivery method compared to a small volume nebulizer. You should avoid using the blow-by technique with an SVN tube because much of the medication is wasted when using this delivery method. An SVN with a mask could be considered but oftentimes with small children, they will not tolerate the mask very well. Also note that children generally will not be able to use an SVN with a mouthpiece either because it's unreasonable to expect a young child to use the nebulizer with a mouthpiece for an entire treatment. So by breaking down the question and using what we know about aerosol drug delivery in children, we could determine that the correct answer has to be B, an MDI with a holding chamber and mask. If you're enjoying this video so far, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I really do appreciate it more than you know. Also, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. But we're not done yet. Let's break down another practice question. A premature newborn infant with an Alpgar score of three is showing signs of hypoxemia, grunting, and intercostal retractions. Which of the following would you recommend? 
A. Suction the neonate. B. Nebulize albuterol. C. Provide supplemental oxygen. Or D. Instill surfactant into the airway. Do you know the answer? Well, let's break it down. This infant is showing signs of severe respiratory distress and an extremely low APGAR score of 3 tells us that the neonate most likely has infant respiratory distress syndrome. In order to improve the infant's condition, you need to administer exogenous surfactant, which can be instilled directly into the airway. There are no indications for suctioning, and albuterol is not indicated at this time either. And although supplemental oxygen may help with the infant's hypoxemia, in this case, with severe respiratory distress, more extensive measures are needed. So we can roll that one out as well. So by using what we know about treating high-risk infants with severe respiratory distress, as well as the process of elimination, we could determine that the correct answer has to be D. Instill surfactant into the airway. Are you still here? Obviously, you're still here if you're still watching. And for that, I feel pretty confident that you are going to be successful whenever you take the board exams. But we're not done just yet. Let's break down another practice question. An arterial blood gas sample has been ordered for a newborn infant and the physician has specifically requested arterialized capillary blood. Which of the following is the best site to obtain the sample? A. The fingertip B. The tip of the toe C. The lateral area of the heel or D. The earlobe Do you know the answer? Let's break it down. To get this one correct, you simply just needed to know that the lateral area of the hill is the preferred puncture site when collecting a capillary sample in infants. Which means that yes, I just gave away the correct answer, but let's break it down further. You could potentially use the infant's fingertip, toe, or earlobe if the lateral heel puncture is unsuccessful, but these are not the preferred sites. The heel is the preferred and typically most effective site to stick in infants. Also note that after you puncture the heel, you should wipe away the first drop of blood and observe for free flow before collection. You do not need to squeeze or milk the puncture site. Here's another important thing to remember. Capillary samples are useful only for assessing the infant's acid-base status, not their oxygenation status. The pH and PaCO2 correlate well with arterial blood. However, the PaO2 does not. So the acid base parameters from capillary blood correlate well with arterial blood, but the oxygenation parameters do not correlate well. So that is just a little tidbit to remember. But by using what we know about capillary blood sampling in infants, as well as the process of elimination, we could determine that the correct answer has to be C, the lateral area of the heel. Real quick guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. Again, it really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. Well, what'd you think about these practice questions? Was it helpful breaking them down in a simplified way? I hope so, and as I always say, definitely try to go through as many of these as possible when preparing for the TMC exam. Even if you don't use our practice questions, this is still a strategy that I recommend for all students. However, if you do want to get access to all of our premium practice questions, definitely consider checking out our TMC test bank. You can still take advantage of the temporary promotion that's going on by using the special link below. Also, if you want to get these practice questions and explanations sent straight to your inbox on a daily basis, you can consider signing up for our Practice Questions Pro membership, which costs less than one of those fancy cups of coffee that all the kids are drinking these days. It's truly never been easier. All you have to do is sign up and we'll send the practice questions to your email address each and every day. Small tidbits of knowledge over time can add up to huge results. I'll drop a link to that as well right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.